Playing of our national anthem here at Soar High School since John isn't here. In honor of John, we'll say play ball, as John usually says after the national anthem. Last year from Miller City, Rams came away with a 4 3 win over the Wildcats. Cole Camaso got the win. Evan East took the loss. Taryn Ward came in and pitched the final two innings to get the save. And ironically, a year ago, the Rams, after that win, were 17 and 4. And this. 17 and 4 today coming in prior to the game versus Miller City. We'll set the Rams defensively. Hunter Bosselman on the mound for Hunter. He does not have a win or a loss. 13 and 2 thirds innings pitched for Hunter. He's allowed 10 earned runs. Five, or allowed 10 runs, five earned runs, has an ERA of 2.55. He has allowed 18 hits, walked five, and struck out 15 in those 13 and two-thirds innings. Behind the plate is Dalton Wolfram at first base is Trent Wimpkin. Second base is Mason McQuillan. Caden Radzik is at short. Taryn Ward's at third. Rams outfield in left field is Aiden Mosier. Center field is Grady Gusweiler. Luke Harris is in right field. B.J. Morlock is your D.H. hitting for the first baseman, Trent Wimpkin. For Miller City coming in at 14-11, they finished at 3-4 in the PCL. Rams sophomore starter, Hunter Bosselin, first three hitters, Brent Koenig, C.J. Lehman, and Caleb Neese. Bosselman going through his warm-up pitches. We'll be back here Monday versus Delta, Tuesday versus Archibald. Wednesday, I'll travel to Holland up there, take a... Uh, Take a little 45-minute trip up there and broadcast the girls' game on Wednesday at 4 o'clock. Weather permitting, of course. Stepping in. Leading off the game, Brett Koenig. 344, 15 RBIs for Brett. Leading off for Coach Peaster. Bosselman winds and fires first pitch. Strike called. We're underway. 11 o'clock on the nose. 66 degrees here at Group Field at hey, Tiller High School on your David Frank weather forecast. <laughs> Bosselman gets the sign, winds it up. Breaking ball. Swung on little shallow fly ball to second base. Mason McQuillan snags it for the first out. <laughs> up to the plate, All right. six, We're here for you. Lehman. Betting the second spot, second baseman, yeah. C.J. Lehman. Lehman, 306 with 14 runs batted in. Yeah. That's scary. Three stooges. Bosselman gets the sign from Wolfram, winds it up. First pitch, strike on the outside corner. Dusty Peaster, Coach Peaster, coaching at third base. 13th season for Coach Peaster, 200 and... 27 wins, 106 in the loss column. That pitch is hit right back through the middle for a base hit. Gus Weiler comes in, fields it, fires it back into Radzik. C.J. Lehman with a one-out single here to get the Miller City offense started. That's going to bring up Caleb Neese. Neese in the three spot for Coach Peaster will be playing at first base. 333 with 16 runs batted in for Caleb Neese. Bats from the left side of the plate. Like 
Pitch is a little high and away. Ball one. That's probably one of John's nephews or cousins. Yeah. Yeah. Jared Neese on deck for the Wildcats. Have a runner at first with one out. C.J. Lehman with a short lead over there. Bosselman comes set. Pitch swung on, fouled back out of play. Runner at first. Just underway here at Sonora High School. Hopefully the rain holds off. Rain's in the area, but rain was in the area last night all around us, and we never felt a drop. Bosselman comes set. Pitch to Nice, high and away. Count. Count, Jim. Two balls and one strike to first baseman Caleb Nice. Bosselman looks over at the runner at first, C.J. Lehman. He comes set. 2-1 pitch coming to Caleb Neese. Fakes at the order of first base. Back with the dive is C.J. Lehman. Fourteen and eleven. Miller said he comes in. Two one pitch. Check swing. Stays high and away. Three to one. Miller City traveled to Wayne Trace last night and uh, knocked off the Raiders twelve to nine. Very impressive win for the Wildcats. Three one pitch by Bosselman. That's high and away. Going to put runners at first and second. Nice trots down the first. C.J. Lehman goes down to second. Two runners on for the Wildcats. Going to bring up the number four hitter, their D.H. Jared Nice. Two seventy-five for Jared with nine nine runs batted in. He's D.H.ing for Carter Nice. Carter playing at short. Bosselman's pitch, breaking ball, strike called. Long pause. Bosselman's come set. 0-1 pitch. Breaking ball. This one stays inside. Count evens at one ball, one strike. No score here in the top of the first inning. Wildcats are threatening to have runners at first and second with one out. One one pitch coming from Bosselman to Nice. How's it back? One ball and two strikes to Jarrett Neese. Brendan Barlogi on deck. Uh, Bosselman, long look in, gets long look in, gets a sign from Wolfram. Come set his pitch is outside. Two balls and two strikes. Coach Rudder up here today oh, yeah, joining us. Usually I hear Coach Rudder down below talking to Ned. <laughs> 2-2 two, two pitch. Bosselman comes set, comes to the plate. Pitch. Inside ball three. Runners take off. Lehman with a stolen base. Following in his footsteps was Caleb Neese. Neese was not going. Lehman was. Runners at second and third with one out. Full count pitch. Or full, full count to Jared Nice. Here comes the payoff pitch. Swung on. Popped into foul territory. Ward given chase forward by the Rams dugout. He runs out of room. So Jared Nice will step back in with a full count. Runners lead from second and third. Bosselman's going to work out of the windup. Come set. Payoff pitch to Jared Neese. Just. Oh, they didn't call him out. Jared Neese caught looking. For the second out, that's a big strikeout for Bosselman and the Rams. Going to bring up the number five hitter, the catcher, Brendan Barlogi. Barlogi, 275 with 19 runs batted in for Coach Beaster's Wildcats. 
Bats from the right side. Bosselman winds and fires, catches the outside corner, strike one. Wind blowing in from center field today, about 10 miles an hour, 66 degrees at first pitch. Bosselman winds it up, his 0-1 to Barlogi. Swung on and fouled first base side. Results in strike two. No balls and two strikes. Two outs, runners at second and third for the Wildcats. Top of the first inning, very overcast here at Sonora High School's Groove Field on this Saturday afternoon. Or late morning, I guess we'll call it. Thomas Weiss on deck for the Wildcats. 0-2 pitch coming to Brendan Barlogi. Just misses outside. One ball and two strikes. <laughs> Bosselman's ready. His 1-2 pitch. Breaking ball. Swung on and missed. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Bosselman. Barlogi goes down swinging. In the inning for the Wildcats, they threaten. They do not score. No runs for Miller City. They get one hit. No errors. And two left on base. After a half inning of play here at Group Field, Miller City nothing. And the Tenor Rams will be coming to bat. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener Hill, Weber & Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Groove Field. Wildcats threatened had runners at second and third with one out. Did not score. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Hunter Bosselman. On the mound for the Wildcats is Ethan Ellerbrook. Ethan Seven innings pitched. He's appeared in two games. He has one start, allowed five hits. Three runs, three earned runs. ERA is three. Walked three and struck out two. Rest of the Wildcat defense, Brendan Barlage behind the plate. Caleb Neese at first. C.J. Layman's at second. Carter Neese is at short. Will Otto's at third. Wildcat outfield, Brett Conan is left fielder. Thomas Weiss is in center. And Ethan Barlagi is in right field. Your DH is Jared Neese, who's hitting for Carter Neese. For the Rams, first three hitters, Aiden Mosier, Caden Radzik, and Dalton Wolfram to face Ethan Ellerbrook. We said Miller City coming in at 14-11. The Rams coming in at 17-4. Rams' last loss was three weeks ago at Miller City. 3-2 loss to the Wildcats, also from the PCL. So Tenora playing their best ball the time you want to play your best ball. Tournament time is a week ago yesterday. We'll be here and we'll play the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. Play Actually, Delta comes in, I believe, Monday. So we'll get a little preview of Delta. Yeah, power one number six, Aiden Mosier. Yeah. Aiden Mosier leads it off. 290 on the season for Aiden. 17 walks and 16 steals, and Mosier's one out single in the bottom of the seventh. Kick started the Rams rally against the Brian Golden Bears oh, hey. last hey, night. Good. That's Nora. Good. Ellerbrock Good. works out of the set position. First pitch is inside. Yeah, ball one. Oh, yeah, you're going to need some help, too, aren't you? No. Rams have won six straight and nine of their last ten. Hi, Rip. How you doing? Pitch to Mosher is a strike. As I said during the yeah. signs excavating pregame, the Rams' record a year ago was actually 17-4 and four at this same time, which is wow. kind of a small miracle, yeah. really. 1-1 one, one pitch to the Rams' left fielder, Aiden Mosher, is inside ball two. 
Mosier singled in that seventh inning with one out, went to second on a errant throw by the Brian Golden Bears. 2-1 pitch. Caught the outside corner. Focus on the game, bro. Two balls and two strikes. Caden Radzig ripped a hard liner right at the left fielder. He came in. It's kind of a do or die for the left fielder last night. And landed at his shoe tops and got by him, allowing Mosier to score the winning run in that thrilling 1 0 win over the Golden Bears. Pitches fouled back by Mosier. Two balls, two strikes. Bottom of the first inning, no score. Pitch to Mosier. Shallow fly ball in the center field. In comes Thomas Weiss to put it away. <laughs> Going to bring up the Rams shortstop, Caden Radzik. Radzik, 366 on the season, has 22 runs batted in and 15 stolen bases. I don't think the Rams actually got a successful stolen base last night. Peters was caught stealing a third. I mean, he really wasn't trying to steal, but he was thrown out at third. Pitches outside to Radzik, ball one. Ethan Ellerbrock on the mound for the Wildcats. Come set, pitch is high, ball two. Ellerbrock, a junior. Breaking ball, inside, two balls and no strikes. Rio pitch coming. Ellerbrock comes set. The pitch outside. Ball four. Down to first base goes Caden Radzik with a walk. So the Rams have a runner at first with one out. Dalton Wolfram. Rams catcher Dalton Wolfram steps in. Dalton back over the 400 mark. 409 for Dalton. 21 runs batted in with 17 stolen bases for Dalton. Mosier. Always a threat to go at first. Pitch stays a bit high. One ball and no strikes. Ethan Ellerbrook on the hill for the Wildcats of Miller City. He comes set. There goes Mosier. Pitch inside, no throw. Mosier was gone before Ellerbrock even released the ball. So stolen base number 17 for Aiden Mosier. Or for Caden Radzik. For Caden Radzik, stolen base by Radzik. So it's his 16th stolen base. Pitch outside. Strike call to Dalton Wolfram. Three balls and a strike to Dalton. That was Radzik that was on first. I know. I know. I will. Mosier flew out to center. If it happens. When it happens. So Radzik leads from second. Pitch to Wolfram. Fouls it back. Out of play. Ask him need any help. Good enough, fella. Two-two? Two-two, Ned. Two balls and two strikes, says Tim. <laughs> Ratchik leads from second. Ellerbrook comes set. Pitch to the plate. Swung on. Laced oh, yeah. over the head of the shortstop. Bring it, bring it, bring Radzik it. had to hold on. Uh, uh, uh. But he rounds third and heads home on the RBI by Dalton Wolfram. Rams lead 1-0 here in the bottom of the first inning. Radzik had to hold. Wolfram's shot just was over the head of Carter Deese. And Wolfram on the throw went down to second base. Nice hustle by Dalton Wolfram. Terran Ward steps in. Terran 3-33 on the season with 15 RBIs. Pitch a little bit outside by Ellerbrook. one -oh pitch coming to Ward. Thrill into left field. Dalton Wolfram hits third. He's going to try and score. Throw to the plate. Not in time. RBI single by Taryn Ward. Puts the Rams up 2-0. For Ward, RBI number 16 on the season. So Ward laces a single into left field for a solid base hit. Going to bring up Luke Harris. Harris. Hitting in the number five spot, playing in right field for Coach Renolette. 297 for Luke with 13 runs batted in this season. Ellerbrock's pitch stays inside, ball one. Probably date ourselves up here, but Ellerbrock kind of reminds us of like Jamie Moyer. He's not going to throw the ball by you. He's going to keep the ball around the plate. 
Ward leads away. Throw in the dirt. Nice stop by Barlogi. He fires down to first base trying to get Ward. Ward back safely on the throw by the catcher. 2-0 Rams here in the bottom of any number one. One out. Runner at first in Terran Ward. Luke Harris at the plate with a two balls and no strike count. Our box pitch. Strike. Called. Nice pitch. Caught the outside corner. Two balls and one strike to Luke Harris. Hunter Balsamon on deck. Coach Renolette coaching at third and Coach Wittick coaching at first today. There goes Ward. Throw down to second. Ward head first dive in with a stolen base. So Terran in safely with the stolen base. Two balls and two strikes to Luke Harris. For Terra, that's his third steal of the season. Pitch to Harris. Swung on. High fly ball into right field. Right fielder Ethan Barlogi comes in, puts it away. For out number two to retire, Luke Harris. they bring up Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman comes in 276 with 13 runs batted in on the season. Darren Ward leads from second. Ellerbrock comes set. First pitch to Bosselman is up and in. Ball one. One zero pitch. Oh, roller third base side foul. One ball and one strike. Rams with two spot here in the bottom of the first inning. They're having an early 2-0 lead over Miller City. Bosselman picks up the bat, steps into the right-hand batter's box with his black jersey with the white numbers and forest green trim. 1-1 one, one pitch, two Bosselman from Ellerbrock. Low and away, nice stop again by Barlogi. Saved Ward from advancing to third. Two outs here in the bottom of the first inning. Mason McQuillan on deck for Tenora. 2-1 pitch coming. Right back through the box in the center field it goes. Ward hits third. He's going to try and score. Here comes the throw to the plate. Throw. Ward is thrown out at the plate by Thomas Weiss. Nice throw by Weiss. So Ward becomes the third out to single for Bosselman. And Ward is thrown out 8-2 at the plate for out number three. In the inning for the Rams, they collect two runs. They do so on three hits. No errors for the Wildcats. And the Rams do not leave anybody on base. Well, actually, one was left on base with Bosselman on the single. Ward was thrown out at the plate. So after winning a play here at Tenora High School's group field, the Tenora Rams 2 and Miller City Wildcats nothing on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. The Law Office of Wiener Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a full-service law firm dedicated to providing quality legal services in defiance in all of Northwest Ohio. Since 1965, their attorneys have had a well-deserved reputation of excellence in serving clients with a focus on integrity, advocacy, and understanding. At Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley, we are a general practice law firm that can handle all of your legal needs. We offer high-quality legal work and personal client service, and each of our attorneys is committed to providing you with top-notch legal support. Attorneys Jim Wiener, Danny Hill, Cam Stanley, and Ian Weber are here to assist you. Give them a call at 419-782-3010 or visit them online at wienerlawoffice.com. The law office of Wiener, Hill, Weber, and Stanley is a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back at Tenora High School. Really? How we darn? Two nothing Rams. John, I, I in, in your honor, John, I said play ball. I said John's not here today, so that's the national anthem. I said and. In honor of John, play ball. <laughs> Rams with two in the bottom of the first on three hits. They lead 2 nothing. On the mound, Hunter Bosselman is going to face six, seven, and eight. Weiss, Barlogi, and Ellerbrook in the Miller City lineup. First pitch to Thomas Weiss as a ball. Weiss playing in center field made a heck of a throw to nail Ward at the plate. 
306 and 14 runs batted in for Weiss. Pitch is high, ball two. <laughs> On the mound is Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman does not have a win or a loss. ERA is 2.55. 13 and two thirds innings pitched for Hunter. 2 0 pitch. Just, yeah, I did get the outside corner there. Two balls and one strike. Bosselman's walk five and struck out 15. He's allowed 18 hits in those 13 and two-thirds inning. 2-1 Two pitch, swung on, tap foul, third base side. Picked up by Coach Peaster down there. You betcha. You've got to be kidding me. Or said earlier in the pregame, Coach Peaster, 13 seasons at Miller City, 227 wins, 106 losses. His winning percentage is 68%. 2-2 pitch has fouled off first base side. Whereas Coach Renolette's winning percentage, 69%. Bosselman comes set. Weiss digs back in. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Wolfram put the tag on Weiss just in case. Three straight strikeouts for... Number 22, Ethan Barlaghi. Bosselman. That's a first out here in the second inning. Ethan Barlaghi steps in. Barlaghi, 188 on the season with 17 runs batted in. He's playing in the left of your right field. Bats from the left side of the plate. Bosselman winds it up. First pitch to Ethan Barlaghi is a strike on the outside corner. John watching, Bridget watching, Pittsburgh Sioux watching. Coach Rudder says hello to everybody out there watching and listening. Strike two on the inside corner. Bosselman ahead of Barlaghi. No balls and two strikes. Space is empty. One out here in the top of the second inning with the Rams with a 2-0 lead over the Wildcats. Pitch just misses. High and away. One ball and two strikes. Lots of baseball and softball next week. 1-2 pitch coming. That one's high and away. Count to... Ethan Barlaghi evens at two balls and two strikes. Monday, Delta's here. Tuesday, Archibald's here. Wednesday, Lady Rams play, I believe, Oak Harbor at 4 o'clock in Springfield. That pitch just misses. Count goes full at 3-2. and two. Ethan Ellerbrock is on deck. Next Friday, we'll be here. The Rams will play the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. 3-2 pitch. That one is outside. Barlaghi worked the walk after being down. No balls and two strikes. So he trots down the first with a one-out walk. Bring up the number eight hitter, the pitcher, Ethan Ellerbrock. So you need a ticket for next Wednesday if you're traveling to Springfield. Then if you're coming here, you'll also need a ticket. Coach Rudder and Mr. Spiller had a nice setup yesterday at the softball diamond over there. Bosselman comes set, fires over to first base, back to first base safely with the head first dive is Ethan Barlaghi. Come on here. Got one, fellas. Throw again back over, with back safely just ahead of the tag by Wimpkin is Ethan Barlaghi. He's trying to find stolen bases on Coach Peace for stats, but I actually don't see stolen bases listed. Another throw over there, back safely, is Barlaghi. I mean, they got to be on here. I must be missing them. But I don't see them, so they're not on here. <laughs> First pitch. Catches the outside corner to Ethan Ellerbrock. No balls and one strike. One out here in the top of the second inning. Rams with a 2 nothing lead. One out walk to Ethan Barlaghi. He's on at first base at the plate is Ethan Ellerbrook. Another thrower, back head first dive. It is Barlaghi. Bosselman trying to keep him close over there for sure. Pitches up and in. Count evens. One ball and one strike. To Ellerbrock. That's one. Watch one. Bosselman. Steps off. 
Ellerbach steps out. We're going to reset and do it all over again. Thank you, Carolyn, for checking us out. We appreciate that. Pitch swung on and missed. Throw down to first base. Nice block by Wimpkin. I actually think Bosselman kind of had a quick pitch on there. Ellerbrock quite wasn't ready. Really late on the swing. One ball and two strikes. Now the count to Ethan Ellerbrock. Will Otto is on deck for the Wildcats. Bosselman, long look over there to first. Come set. One, two, pitch. Breaking balls. Yeah. Just misses. Two balls and two strikes. We'll reset the Rams defense for those of you just tuning in. Ray tuning back in. Thank you, Ray. Appreciate that. All the way from Kentucky. 2-2 two, two pitch. Hit first base side. Whipkin steps on the bag. They got to put the tag on him. And Razik does double play. What a double play for the Rams. One hopper to first base. Whipkin stepped on the bag. Had to fire down to Razik. And Razik had to put the tag on the runner because there was no force. Fantastic double play. Ends the inning for the Rams. In the inning for the Wildcats. No runs. No hits. No Ram errors. And nobody left after an inning and a half here at Groove Field at Sonora High School. Sonora 2 and Miller City nothing. The Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters is a proud sponsor of Tenora Sports and Tenora Rams Live. The Athletic Boosters is a nonprofit organization that supports Tenora athletes, coaches, and athletic facilities. The Boosters' support is shown in many ways, including volunteering time, raising money, and contributing funds to better enhance the team or the organization's performance. Yearly and lifetime memberships are available. Visit them on Facebook at Tenora Athletic Boosters. Back here. 2-0 Rams as we head to the bottom of inning number two, and sometimes the talent isn't the greatest for Coach Renolette, but you're not going to find a team that's more fundamentally sound than the BR coach team. Right there is a perfect example. One hopper down the first base. Whipkin stepped on the base and fired down to second. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Ethan Barlogi is going to take over for the <laughs> for Miller City. Tim and Coach Rudder up here pointing at each other. Tim behind the plate. Coach Rudder up here doing the scoreboard. So a new pitcher is lefty, Ethan Barlogi. And for the stats... <laughs> Not doing too bad so far. Yeah, usually Coach Rudder and Ned down there hollering umpires. Now Coach Rudder's doing scoreboard. So for Ethan Barlogi, seven in the third innings pitch. He's appeared in two games. He started, he's appeared in three games. He started two. No wins and two losses. ERA of 5.27. It's allowed eight hits, 11 runs, six earned runs. He's walked 11 and struck out six in those seven in the third innings. Yeah. First pitch by Ethan Barlogi is a strike to Mason McQuillan. McQuillan's still trying to get his first varsity hit. Played fantastic at second base, though, this week, getting, I believe, three starts this week. One ball and one strike. Brendan Barlogi asks for time. He's going to go out and have a conversation with his pitcher, Ethan Barlogi. He may have got crossed up there, so he wants to get the sign straight. One ball and one strike. Bottom of the second inning. Bases are empty. McQuillan at the plate. Lefty Ethan Barlogi's pitch is a bit outside. Two balls and one strike. Wind blowing in from center field. Very light breeze here at Tenor High School. 2-1 pitch. McQuillan fouls it off. First base side out of play. Two balls and two strikes. I believe twice this week when we've had games here. We haven't had a breeze, which is unheard of, out here at the school. It could be 98 degrees, and we still have a breeze here at Sonora High School. Swung on and miss. Ethan Barlogi collects his first strikeout. McQuillan goes down swinging. That's the first out here in the second. That's going to bring up B.J. Morlock. Morlock is DHing for the Rams' first baseman, Trent Wumpkin. B.J. 107 is his average in limited playing time. Lefty Barlogi comes set, fires, pitches outside, ball one. 
Oh, we hit game three. Rams, two runs on three hits in the first inning. 1-0 pitch. Strike call on the outside corner. One one pitch. That's high and away. Two balls and one strike. Tim must not think Coach Rudder can hear because he is just shouting the word strike today, which I don't remember him doing that in the past. <laughs> two one pitch swung on it. Missed. Count even. Count even that two balls and two strikes. <laughs> Barlogi's 2-2 two, two. to VJ is high and away. Three balls and two strikes. Coach Wittick coaching at first and Coach Renolette coaching at third for the Rams. Payoff pitch. Low and away. Ball four. Morlock works a one-out walk. BJ heads down to first base. Going to bring up the Rams center fielder, Grady Gusweiler. Grady, 261 on the season. Seven runs batted in. 14 walks and seven stolen bases and as always numerous highlight catches in center field first pitch is inside ball one that won three weeks ago at Clyde though I'll, that's probably other than the one he had last year at Ottawa Hills in the tournament other two of the best catches I've seen in recent memory first pitch is a ball second pitch is a strike count to Grady is one ball one strike one out here in the bottom of the second inning Rams have a runner at first BJ Morlock and they lead two nothing over Miller City pitch to Grady is fouled back into the bleachers on the first base side Ethan Barlogi on in relief of the starter Ethan Ellerbrook on, Grady. one two pitch to Grady Check swing. Ball goes to the backstop. First base is occupied, so Grady cannot advance. However, down to second base goes B.J. Morlock on the wild pitch. So Grady is the second out on the strikeout. Swung through the ball. Ball went through the catcher to the backstop. But with the rule is, if first base is occupied, you cannot. Be awarded first base on the strikeout. If you make it there, that is. Pitch to Mosier is outside for a ball. One ball and no strikes to Aiden Mosier. Mosier 0 for 1. Flew out to center field in his first at bat in the first inning. Comes in with a 290 average. Pitch to Aiden is inside. One, two balls and no strikes to the Rams left fielder. Been a fantastic season so far for Aiden. 2-0 pitch, catches the outside corner, strike one called. Two balls and a strike. Rams have a runner in the scoring position down to second. Pitch to Aiden, Mosier hits it right back through the box. They had him positioned perfectly. Oh, wow, throw over to first base yeah. by Carter Neese. Just in time, I think, to get Aiden Mosier. Mosier rocketed it right back through the middle, but the shortstop had him Positioned perfectly, so Mosier is retired 6-3. Nice play by Carter Neese to just nip Mosier at first. In the inning for the Rams, get a runner a second. Do not advance him. No runs, no hits, no errors, and one left on base. After two innings of play here at Group Field at Tenor High School, it's the Rams 2 and the Wildcats of Miller City, nothing on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Drop Zone Pizzeria in Ayersville and Stryker offers the area's best pizza, wings, subs, and calzones. In fact, Drop Zone Pizzeria was voted the area's best pizza in 2020 and again for 2022. From pickle pizza to pilot bread to grandma pizza, Drop Zone Pizzeria is always looking outside the pizza box for something special for their fantastic customers. Order by calling in Ayersville at 419-395-2525 or in Stryker at 419-990-2525. Hours of operation close Monday, Tuesday through Thursday, and Sunday, 4 to 8 p.m., Friday and Saturday till 9. Drop Zone Pizzeria now with two locations, downtown Ayersville at 13995 Fruit Ridge Road and also at 301 South Defiant Street in downtown Stryker. Stop in at the Stryker location for a bite of ice cream. Visit them on Facebook at the Drop Zone Pizzeria where online ordering is available. And remember, the Drop Zone Pizzeria says go Rams! Top 
top of the third inning here at Sonora High School for the visiting Wildcats and Coach Peaster. He's going to send up 9-1-2. and two. Will Otto at the top. Brent Koenig and C.J. Lehman. First pitch to Otto was a strike. Will Otto, 182 on the season with three runs batted in. Bosselman on the mound for the Rams. The junior right-hander winds it up. His 0-1 pitch coming to Otto. Swung on and missed. Bosselman quickly ahead. No balls and two strikes. No two pitch coming. Fouled right back into your front room. No balls and two strikes. We had a glove. He would have caught that one, coach. <laughs> yes, last night, 12-9 win for Miller City at Wayne Trace. O2 2 pitch. Breaking ball fouled off. Third base side. Coach Peaster with a nice glove down there. Fields it. That was the ball to Taryn Ward. Bosselman's 0-2 pitch coming to Will Otto. Breaking ball just missed his elbow. One ball and two strikes. One, two, pitch. High and away. Count even. It's two balls and two strikes. Nice week of baseball. Beautiful day at Wasion. Actually, we had like three games where there wasn't a cloud in the sky. 2-2 two, two pitch to Otto from Bosselman. Swung on and missed. Strike three. Down goes Otto for the second out of the inning. Four strikeout for Bosselman. Top of the lineup, Brett Koenig steps in. Koenig popped out to the second baseman. Mason McQuillan has first plate appearance. Bossom in breaking ball. Inside strike call. Nice pitch by Hunter. We said the Rams as a staff. ERA is 1.81. That's just amazing. 0-1 pitch. Ground ball, first base side. Whipkin scoops it up. Bosselman hustles over there. Nice play by the Rams in time to get Koenig. 3-1 on the put out. Up to the plate, number six. For C out number Lehman. two. I'll bring up the number two hitter, the second baseman, C.J. Lehman. Lehman singled, got as far as third base in the first inning. And did not score. A little bit of rain is starting to fall here at Snort High School. That pitch is a strike on the inside corner, but have no fear. That's why we have turf here. As long as we don't have lightning, we can have a little bit of rain. We can have a lot of rain, actually, as Coach Rutter said between innings. It can rain all at once, so we're still going to play ball. As long as it's not raining and there's no lightning in the area. No balls and two strikes Two strikes to C.J. Lehman. Bosselman gets the sign from Wolfram, winds it up. Just misses outside. One ball and two strikes. Base is empty. Two outs here in the top of the third for the Wildcats. The Rams have a 2 nothing lead. Two runs in the first for Tenora. 1-2 pitch. Outside. Just missed. Count evens. Two balls and two strikes. Two two pitch coming. Inside, but swung on and missed. CJ Lehman goes down swinging, kind of handcuffed himself on that one. In the inning for the Wildcats. No runs, no hits, no ram errors, and nobody left on base after two and a half innings here at Sonora High School. The Sonora Rams two, Miller City Wildcats, nothing on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Back at Tenora High School, second 
getting a work for the lefty Ethan Barlogi. Barlogi in relief of Ethan Ellerbrook. Ellerbrook pitched the first inning. Barlogi came in last inning in relief. And for the Rams, Radzik, Wolfram, and Ward. Now batting, number two, Katie Barlogi. Actually, forgot a game last week. The Lady Rams, I think, on Monday. I don't know if they're playing here or they're going to Bryan, but they scheduled a game against Bryan. Kind of a tournament tune up again for the Lady Rams. Pitches outside, ball one to Caden Radzik. Radzik walked and scored. Stole the base as well in the first inning. Barlogi's 1 0 pitch. Just misses. Two balls and no strikes. Ethan Barlogi gets the sign from Brendan Barlogi. Rocks and fires pitch. Strike called. Two balls and one strike to the Rams shortstop. Caden Radzik, 366 for Radzik on the season. Collected his 16th steal in the first inning. Radzik swings. It's a high fly ball into foul territory on the right side, giving chase. Ethan Barlogi and, and Caleb Neese, neither one can catch up with it. Falls well, harmlessly okay. to the grass. So Radzik stays alive. Two balls and two strikes to Caden. But the Brian Golden Bears, I believe, are 19-1. and one. Earlier this week, Coach Fairchild went over to Indiana and played the state champion Eastside. I forget their nickname, but Blazers, Coach says. Eastside Blazers. 2-2 two -two pitch. A little bit low. Three balls and two strikes, so Coach Fairchild and Lady Rams playing their best ball as well here in tournament time. Playing the best in the area. Radzik smashes it at the third baseman. Will Otto had it. And it kind of went through the wickets behind him. He couldn't find it, so Radzik's on. First base. Give me an error on the third baseman. So Radzik reaches on the Otto air. Dalton Wolfram's going to step in. The Rams catcher had an RBI in the first inning. And literally went to second base on the throw in. First pitch was a strike to Dalton. Dalton, 409. 22 runs batted in now with 17 steals. There goes Radzik. Throw down a little bit high. Radzik safe at second. The shortstop for Miller City, Carter Neese, went high in the air to grab it. Came down at the same time Radzik was sliding into the base. And Radzik unintentionally kind of took the feet out from Carter Neese. He would have held on to the ball, would he been out? So Radzik's in with another stolen base. That's his... 17th stolen base of the of the season. It looked like the throw was on time. The throw was a bit high. Had it been right on the bag, Radzik would have been out. But the throw from Brendan Barlogi was a little bit high. Soaring into the air was Carter Neese. Caught it. And Radzik, the ball, and Neese all kind of met at the same spot. Well, Dalton. Coach Peaster out there to check on him, make sure he's all right. Peaster heads back to the first base dugout. Count to Dalton is one ball and one strike. Radzik leads away, pitch is outside, two balls and a strike. Thanks again, everybody, for watching and listening. 2 1 pitch to Dalton. Fouled back. Two balls and two strikes to the Rams' backstop. Karen Ward hustles to get that foul ball into the fence. 2-2 two -two pitch to Wolfram. Drills it to center field. Thomas Weiss cruises over. Ball goes off his glove. Gets behind him. That's going to score Radzik. Radzik hits the bag at third. Wolfram in to third base. It'll be here on the center fielder. Now, Wolfram hustles all the way over to third base. Rams get a run on the board as Radzik comes around to score. They lead 3-0. Thomas Weiss cruised over into right center field, just put the glove up there and just basically missed the ball. 
hit off the top of his glove. Karen Ward steps in. Ward singled and stole the base in the first inning. Ethan Barlaghi, starting pitcher for the Wildcats defense, has let him down here in the bottom of the third. Pitch is oh low. Two balls and no strikes to Karen Ward. So Wolfram got a, that's not even a single, it's just an error. I don't think he gets an RBI either. That pitch is outside. Three balls had no strikes. You and Luke here. Barlogge gets the sign as 3-0 pitch to Taron Ward. Swung on and missed. Strike one to Taron. Let's see if they hit it here. Harris awaits on deck for Tenora. Yeah. The lefty's 3-1. Ward smashes it to center field. Weiss goes back, turns the wrong way. Now it's way over his head. Ward hits first. He's going to try and get the second. And he does. RBI double for Taron Ward. So Ward checks in. Dalton Wolfram touches the plate for run number four for the Rams. Two in the first and two in the third. Coach Peaster asked for time. He's going to head out to the mound and talk to Ethan Barlaghi. But in Barlaghi's defense, he's done everything he can do. Unfortunately, his defense has took the inning off. So next week, the Lady Rams, you know what they're, you know what they're here, Coach? Brian, is Brian playing here, do you know, the softball? Yeah. Are we hosting or are we going there? I don't recall. Coach is going to check, but I know they play Brian somewhere. He's checking her out. The lady or the lady Rams will play Brian at a undisclosed location. <laughs> the boys are here versus Delta. Okay, coach confirms the Lady Rams will host the 19 and one Brian Golden Bears on Monday. So get out and watch that game. That's a heck of a game to watch. 16 and 6 Lady Rams and the 19 to 1 Lady Golden Bears. Pitch to Luke Harris as a strike. Harris flew out to right field in the first. 297 for Luke on the season. Taron Ward's at second. Pitch is low. One ball and one strike to the senior right fielder, Luke Harris. Harris, GMC first team all basketball. Average 18 points a contest. Pitch to Luke. He drills it to center field. Weiss comes in, plays it on a hop. Ward had the hold. He dives into th oh, he out. He, yep. he's out at third. Taron dove and kind of got stuck in the turf yep. and came up about a half a foot short. So Ward is out at third. That's the first out of the inning. Luke Harris is on at first. Ward had to wait to see if the ball is going to be caught by the center fielder Thomas Weiss who came running in one hopped Weiss and Ward took off headed for third usually when the turf is a little bit wet it actually accelerates you here. pitch is a strike to Bosselman Bosselman singled in the first second pitch is a ball one ball and one strike to Hunter Bosselman one out Luke Harris is on it first Mason McQuillan waits on deck. Right. Ethan Barlaghi's pitch. Strike called. One ball and two strikes. So a full week of action. Baseball and softball. One, two pitch. Bosselman swings and fouls it off. First base side out of play. Count stays at one and two. Pitch to Bosselman. Hits this one into the Rams dugout. One ball and two strikes. It remains. Four nothing Rams as they bat here in the third inning. One two pitch to Bosselman. Drills it to left field. Down the line it goes. Foul. Wasselman just smoked it. Just a little bit foul down the left side. Harris back to first. One out. 
One ball and two strikes to Balsam and three straight foul balls off Hunter's bat. This one, he fouls again, third base side. When we were over at Wasiana on Tuesday, they hit so many foul balls first base side, I said you could people that go hunting for golf balls, they could go over to Wasiana and probably find 100 baseballs in that mess out there. 1-2 pitch to Boston and again. This one he hits the third base. Scooped up by Will Otto. Down to second base. Oh! Throw back to first is not in time. Harris almost beat the throw down to second, but Harris is a force out at second. Bosselman's on at first on the up fielder's the choice. Number two, Eli Plasman. 6-4 on the put out at second. But Luke Harris was with the whisker of beating that out. <laughs> Eli Plasman is going to step in. He's going to pinch hit for Mason McQuillan. So Plasman will hit for McQuillan and for Eli this season. Hitting 300 right on the nose. Runner at first base is Hunter Bossom with two outs now. Rams lead 4-0 as they He's bat here in the bottom of the third. Ethan Barlucky comes set. Lefties 1-0 to Eli Plasman. Strike called. Come on, dudes. One ball and one strike to Eli Plasman. That pitch is high and away. Eli's actually done a very good job on the mound as well this year. Eli 4-1 with an area of 2.16. Two one to Eli low. Nice stop by Barlog. He threw his body out in front of that one, saved a wild pitch. Bosselman still at first base, had to wait to see if the ball got by Barlogi. Ethan Barlogi gets a sign from Brendan Barlogi. Three one pitch is inside. So Eli Plasman with a two out walk gets down the first base. Hunter Bosselman trots down the second. Rams have runners at first and second with two out. B.J. Morlock will step to the plate. Morlock, the D.H., walked in the second inning. <laughs> Ethan Barlaghi's pitch to B.J. is a strike. We got a lot of people. We got Pittsburgh Sue. We got Ray. We got Carolyn. We got Bridget. We got John. We got a slew of people watching today. Pitch swung on and missed by BJ. Goes down, no balls, and two strikes. O2 pitch coming. Barlogi comes set. Pitch to Morlock. This one gets away from Brendan Barlogi, the catcher, allows the runners to move up a base. Bosselman stops at third. Eli Plasman goes down to second base. Rams with runners in scoring position now with a 1 2 count to BJ Morlock. See it drive it. When blowing in from center field straight away. 1 2 pitch to BJ. Stays high. Two balls and two strikes. Nice day for baseball here at Sonora outside of the cloudy skies. 2 2 pitch coming. Morlock smashes it into right field. Oh, no, a diving stop by the second baseman. Not in time. Two runs are going to score for Morlock with a single, scoring Bosselman and Plasman, but that was ticketed for right field. C.J. Lehman just launched his body, dove, came up with it from the seat of his pants. Tried to throw to first base, which he did, just not in time to get Morlock. So B.J. with a Two out, two RBI single to put the Rams up 6 nothing. Going to bring up Grady Gusweiler. First pitch to Grady. Strike called on the outside corner. Grady struck out in the second. Yeah, Grady. Come on, that was a heck of a play and a heck of a attempt by second baseman C.J. Lehman for Miller City. Grady smashes it at the shortstop. Shortstop Carter Neese fires over just in time to get to Speedy Gusweiler. So Grady's out 6-3 for out number three. Here in the third inning, Rams put four on the board. They do so with three hits. Two official errors in the inning for Miller City. And the Rams leave one on base. After three innings of play here at Tenor High School, 
It is Miller City and Tenora, the Lady or the Lady Rams. The Rams lead Miller City by a score of six nothing on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. Have your hair and nails gotten out of control over the past few months? Cut and Polish Salon of Defiance is your local salon to get all pampered up. Cut and Polish Salon offers a vast range of quality services, including haircuts, highlights, specialty coloring, waxing, manicures, and pedicures. Please schedule a visit at their fun, relaxing salon where you can be sure that all of your hair and nail needs are a top priority. Cut and Polish Hair and Nail Salon is located at 413 Hopkins Street in Defiance. Be sure to book your appointment today by calling 419-576-5087 or do your booking online by visiting their Facebook page. Cut and Polish Salon says, remember, it's all fun and games until someone breaks a nail. Cut and Polish Salon is a proud supporter of Tadora Rams Live. Top of inning number four we go. Three, four, and five. Caleb Neese, Jared Neese, and Brendan Barlogi to face Hunter Bosselman. Rams have Stig Bosselman with a 4 nothing lead here in the top of the fourth. The defense for Miller City outside of that nice play by C.J. Lehman pretty much abandoned him that inning. So Barlogi was on the mound. Had a case of bad luck there. Nice. Walked in the first. Caleb Neese, 333 on the season. First pitch is a strike to Caleb Neese. <clears throat> Bosselman's 0 1 to Caleb Neese. Swings and launches it into center field. Aiden Mosier drifts into left center, left center field and puts it away. In front of Grady Gusweiler, out number one, F7, actually. That's about ready to put F8 because we could pretty much hit in the straightaway center field. Caleb Neese, actually, is headed, he's heading to Jackson College. The previous batter, Jared Neese, steps in. Now first pitch to Jared as a ball. Breaking ball inside as Jared Neese spins out of the way. He struck out looking in the first inning. Miller City comes in at 14 and four. The Rams 17 and four. 2-0 pitch. Outside corner strike called. Two balls and one strike. Lady or the I keep saying Lady Rams. Rams have met the Wildcat Cats last year on a Saturday. A little tapper first base side. Bosselman. It stays on the line, I think. It did not. It just barely. <laughs> First base coach is wondering the same. He's like, wasn't that on the line? Huh. <laughs> the Rams, I don't know. We can't see from up here. Looking through pane glass and a fence, but. Best of the best back there, Mr. Tim. Oh, yeah. They say it was a foul ball, so it was two balls and two strikes to Jared Neese. Bosselman's 2-2 pitch coming to Neese. Inside, just missed him again. Count goes full at 3-2. and two. Yeah. 3-2 pitch. All right, buddy. Little tapper, first base side. Bosselman can't get to it. Plasman can't get to it either. Infield single for... Jared Neese. Up to the plate, oh, miscommunication there by the Rams. Bosselman came off the mound, thought he could get it. Plasman kind of was waiting back. I think he was going to cover first base. And actually, the ball wound up being hit to Eli at short or short at second by the time he fielded it. Did not have a play. So Jared Neese on with a one out infield single is going to bring up Brendan Barlogi. Barlogi struck out in the first. Bosselman's pitch hit to by Ward at third into left field. Back-to-back -back single. So Barlogi stops at first. And Jared Neese stops at Up second. Play, number three, Thomas Weiss. Going to bring it to number six hitter, center fielder Thomas Weiss. Weiss struck out in the second. Six-nothing Rams here in the top of the fourth. Miller City trying to chip Away at the Rams' six-run lead, have runners at first and second with one out. Bosselman's pitch is high, ball one. Come on here, come on. So Monday, we'll have baseball and softball. Lady Rams here versus Bryan. And baseball here versus Delta. And Bosselman's 1-0 pitch stays high. Wolfram fires down to first base, back 
to the bag is Brendan Barlogi. And with a, any sort of luck whatsoever, like a lot of luck, the Rams will see Delta twice this week, as long as a Delta and Ottawa Hills play in the sectionals. Winner of that game plays here on Friday. Line drive down the right field line. That falls just inside the line for a single, a long single. And that's going to load the bases. Jared Nee stops at third. Brendan Barlogi stops at second. Thomas Weiss stops at first. Three straight singles for the Wildcats have loaded the bases. Ethan Barlogi steps in. He walked in the second. Barlogi 188 on the season, but has 17 runs batted in. Ethan bats from the left side. Bosselman's going to work out of the windup with the bases loaded. First pitch, outside. Strike called. Bosselman winds it up. 0-1 pitch, same spot. Strike two called. Like throwing darts. Bosselman's 0-2 to Barlogi. Drills it into left field. Mosier puts it away, stumbles, loses his footing. Scoring the first run on the sacrifice fly is Jared Neese. Miller City is on the board. They trail 6-1. Barlogi with a sacrifice fly, F7. He gets an RBI on the play. That is the second out. Runners had to hold up. Mosier came running in, caught it. Couldn't make a throw, kind of lost his balance and took a little tumble, but got the most important thing, got the out. We have a pinch hitter for Miller City. Owen Toby will step in for Ethan Ellerbrook. First pitch to Toby is a strike. Hey, base, fellas. So Toby steps in with a 294 average, has six runs batted in here in 2023. Runners lead from first and second, 0-1 pitch. Little tapper first base side, Bosselman can't get it. Similar play, nice play. Rams learn from the previous batter. Little slow roller first base side, Bosselman tried to get it. He couldn't, Plasma came racing in. Underhand the ball to Bosselman, who hit the bag at first, retiring the Wildcats. In the inning for Miller City, they finally get on the board. They score a run. Miller City had three straight singles in the inning. No errors by the Rams, and two are left on base. That was a nice play to end that inning for the Tenor Rams. So after three and a half innings here at Sonora High School, the Tenor Rams 6 and the Miller City Wildcats 1. We'll be back with more action here on Tenor Rams Live on your Drop Zone Pizza Serious scoreboard after this timeout. Is your business looking for someone to take the day-to-day -day worries of your bookkeeping off your mind? Weber Bookkeeping Solutions of Defiance is here to help. With over five years of small business bookkeeping experience and seven years in banking, you can be confident that your books are in the right hands with Jenny Weber. Let Weber Bookkeeping Solutions handle the monthly tracking and reports so that you can focus on your business goals. Contact Jenny at 419-956-1273, and you can also visit her on Facebook or at WeberBookkeeping.com. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Oki Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Back here at Groove Field, we're going to have a new pitcher, Owen Toby who just hit last inning is going to come in. Toby, with just two innings pitched on the season, has appeared in one game. ERA of 3.50 in the two innings. Toby's allowed three hits, one run. That was earned. He's walked two, and he's struck out two. So another lefty, Owen Toby, steps in. And as... 
Coach Peaster was coming back to the first base dugout. He had a conversation with the home plate umpire, Tim. Was wondering about that little slow roller down the first base side. Looked to me like, I mean, looked like, it, like most like it was touching the white. So Coach Peaster and Tim got a good chuckle out of that. <laughs> I think Coach Peaster was just wondering if it was, seriously was it touching the white. Because my first base coach guarantees me that it was touching the white, which it appeared that it was. Like I said, we can't see up here, but it looked like it was touching the white. So we're into the bottom of the fourth inning. Rams with a 6-1 lead over the Wildcats. Aiden Moser steps in. Moser 0 for 3, 290 coming in for Aiden. First pitch by Toby. Gives the ball. Gets away from the catcher, Barlogi. Caden Radzik scoops it up. Fires back in. Pittsburgh Sioux watching with Ray and Bridget and Carolyn and John and several others. Kobe's pitch to Mosier. Ball two on the inside. <laughs> Toby is the third pitcher to work for Coast Pister and the Wildcats. Works from the third base side of the mound. Pitched to Mosier's call to strike. Whereas last night, Castillo Corbin pitched a heck of a game. His second, actually his third or fourth straight really good game. When they picked the runner off at first, <laughs> pitch to Mosier stays high. Three balls and a strike. He's working out of the stretch, so they picked the runner off. So Corbin, just out of instinct, his next pitch with nobody on base, he was pitched out of the set, the set position. And he went right back to the windup after that. 19 straight batters retired by Castile last night. Mosier fouls it off since a 3-1 pitch foul over the third base dugout. Count goes full to the Rams leadoff hitter, Aiden Mosier. Toby's 3 2 to Mosier. He lines it over the head of. No! Oh, my word! Nice 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 Ethan Barlogi running through the glove up and snagged it, stealing a, probably a triple away from Mosier. That's the second time that I thought that the Rams had a hit and they didn't. Just going to wait for the ball to land next time. Nice play by Ethan Barlogi out there for the first out here in the bottom of the fourth. C.J. Lehman had a play the inning before. Didn't result in an out. But that was ticketed for right field, and he had a heck of a dive on that play. First pitch to Caden Radzik is a ball. Toby's pitch. Misses Radzik. I guess it did miss him. It did hit him. So Caden heads down to first base on the hit by pitch. Caden scored two runs coming into that bat and has two stolen bases. Now with the plate number 15, Dalton Wolfram. Going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Dalton as well has been on base twice. Had an RBI double and scored a run in the first. Reached on an error in the third and came around to score. Radzik always a threat to go. Two steals already. First pitch by the lefty Toby to Dalton Wolfram as a strike. Bottom of the fourth, 6-1 Rams. They have a runner at first with one out. No balls and one strike to Dalton Wolfram. Pitch low. Nice stop by Brendan Barlogi. So Toby came off the bench to the mound. He was not in the game prior, prior to that other than the pinch hit that he had in the previous inning. There goes Radzik. Throw down. Not in time. Radzik picked up his third steal of the day. He got rid of it right away. Yeah. So Caden, with 18 stolen bases on the season, steals the lead from Dalton Wolfram. Dalton has 17. 2 1 pitch coming to Dalton from Toby. Ground ball deep, shortstop, diving stop by the shortstop. Carter Neese does not have a play. Radzik had to hold up with the play right in front of him. So Wolfram with an infield single. Terran Ward. Yeah. Terran Ward digs in. Ward singled and stole the base in the first. And doubled in the third. Oh, take. 
Runners at first and second will lead away. First pitch to Terrans, the ball. Or for him at first, Radzik at second. Ward at the plate. There goes Razik down to third. Throw in to third base. Not in time. A good throw would have had Razik. So Caden picks up stolen base number four tonight. 19 on the season for Caden. Well, from right behind him, also picked up a stolen base. So he has 18 as well. Or 19. 19 for Razik. 18 for Dalton. Pitch to Ward is up and in. Two balls and a strike. One out. Rams with runners at second and third. Leading six to one here in the bottom of inning number four. Here from Groom Field at Tenor High School. <laughs> Toby's 2-1 to Ward. Just a little bit high and away. Three balls and one strike. Luke Harris on deck for Tenora. Wow. Well, 3-1 pitch misses, so Ward trots down the first base to load him up oh, for Luke Harris. Harris flew out to right field in the first, reached on a single in the third. 297 for Luke coming in, so his average is a, just a shade over 300. Coach Peaster asks for time. He's going to head out to the mound and talk to Owen Toby and his infield. So next week, the Lady Rams will host Brian in a regular season game. It's not on your schedules. The boys will be here versus Delta. Tuesday, boys will host Archibald. Coach Selgo and the Blue Streaks will come in. Wednesday, the Lady Rams will be in Springfield and play Oak Harbor, I believe, at in Holland. Hello. And the Lady, the Lady Rams, the Rams back here Friday. The sectional finals versus the winner of Delta and Ottawa Hills. First pitch to Harris with the bases loaded. He swings and sends a fly ball to Ethan Barlogi and right. Barlogi's throw to the plate on tie. Got him. Yeah. yeah. Throw down to third base. Dalton Wolfram, he is caught. Trying to tag up at third, but the run does count. Scoring was Caden Radzik on the sacrifice fly by Luke Harris. F9 on the put out. Put out for Ward was at third. Uh, Wolfram was caught trying to tag up at third base. So in the inning for the Rams, they just get the one run. And they do so on one hit. No errors. And with Ward being thrown out at third, just one runner left on base. We're through four here at Group Field. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard, it is Tenora 7 and Miller City Wildcats 1. We'll be back after this. Time out. Okalona Tavern, located in downtown Okalona, is the home of the famous Okie Tavern Wings. Stop in after the game and get some delicious wings, burgers, fries, onion rings, and enjoy a nice cold beverage while talking about the game. Hours of operation are Tuesday to Sunday, opening at 4 p.m. Check out the Okalona Tavern on Facebook for a menu before you head out. Mexican food specials every Thursday and Sunday. The Okalona Tavern, a proud supporter of the Tenora Rams. Getting better together is our goal for you and your family at Fairchild Family Chiropractic. Here, we are focused on getting our patients to achieve long-term wellness just beyond short-term symptom relief. At Fairchild Family Chiropractic, we do this by working closely with you and personalizing each treatment plan. Now open and accepting new patients. Come see Dr. A.J. Fairchild at 100 Stadium Drive. Call 419-576-5070 to schedule your appointment or book online at fairchildfamilychiro.com. Dr. Fairchild, a proud Tenora alum says go Rams. Back to group field we are. Rams with a 7-1 to lead as we head to the top of inning number 5 for the Wildcats of Miller City. Connor Hillmiller will step in. He's heading for Will Otto. So Hillmiller pinch hitting in the number 9 spot. Steps in, bets from the right side of the plate. Mr. Tim, the home plate umpire, has got to get that down. Make sure he gets his note. So here Miller with the 184 average and four runs batted in on the season. Great. 
Her Miller. Southmore. First pitch. By Hunter Bosselman is a ball. Top of the fifth, 7 1. Rams with a 6 1 advantage. Bosselman pitched very well so far. Pitch check swing stays high. Ball two. Two balls and no strikes to the pinch hitter for Miller City. Connor Hermiller. Bosselman's 3 0. Strike called. Two balls and one strike to. Connor Hermiller. Breaking ball hit. Deep shortstop. Radzik knocks it down. Gets up. Throws not in time. That'll be an infield single for Hillmiller. Radzik deep in the hole. Slid. Backhanded it. Time he got up and threw. Not in time to get Hermiller at first. So a leadoff single by the number nine hitter. He's on at first base. Top of the lineup. Brent Koenig. So Koenig steps in. 344, 15 runs batted in. He is 0 for 2. Breaking ball, nice pitch by Bosselman. Strike one called. Runner at first for the Wildcats. No out. They trail by six here in the top of the fifth. Bosselman comes set. Pitch just misses. Count evens at one ball and one strike. Bosselman looks over at the runner. Here Miller at first base. Comes set. Pitch to the plate. Just a bit high. Two balls and a strike. Three straight singles last inning for Miller City. Plated their first run. They have one run on five hits. Pitch drilled in the center field. Cussweiler has to play it on a bounce. Throw into second base. <laughs> Her Miller almost got forced out of second base. Gusweiler came in. Fielded the ball, fired into oh, second like base. Six, they almost caught Hermiller sleeping, so back-to-back -back singles have put Wildcats at first and second with nobody out. There was a number two hitter, the second baseman, C.J. Lehman. Lehman with a single and stolen base in the first. Struck out in the third. Bosselman's pitch outside. One ball and no strikes. Lehman with a heck of a play a couple innings ago in the defensive side. Snag the ball, headed for right field. Bosselman's pitch is up and in. Two balls and no strikes. First outing for Hunter in a few weeks. Could be getting a little bit tired. Activity in the Rams bullpen. They can't see that far. I'm too old. Pitches, catches the inside corner. Two balls and a strike. Almost looks like Mason McQuillan. So Mason warming up in the Rams bullpen. 2-1 pitch, swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes to C.J. Lehman. Caleb Neese on deck for the Wildcats. Bosselman comes set, looks back at the runner at second. Pitch to the plate. Oh, soft fly ball into left field. Mosier comes on, has to play it on the hop. Get down, get down. Can't find the ball. That's going to load the bases up. Had Mosier fielded it cleanly, I think they actually would have got the runner out at third base, but no, the ball hit. Aiden couldn't find it. Anywhere, fellas. So Hermiller is on at third. Koenig is on at second. And Lehman, with the third straight single, is on at first. Bases full of Wildcats. Number three hitter, Caleb Neese, steps in. Neese walked in the first, flew out to Mosier last time up. 6-1, Rams lead. No outs for the Wildcats. First pitch by Nice. Just misses. Ball one. Nice headed to Jackson College next season. Swings. Fouls it off. Third base side. I guess in the fall would be the correct term. Nice bats from the left side. Bases full of Wildcats. No place to put them. Bosselman works out of the windup. 1-1 one, one pitch. Inside just misses. Two balls and a strike. Blue. 
Mosselman's 2-1 coming to Caleb Neese. He drills it. Gus Weiler on his horse, puts it away. They had him positioned perfectly, tagging up and scoring. For the Wildcats is a pinch runner, Hermiller. That's their second run, but initially off the bat. I thought that was in the gap, but Rams had Nice shaded over to right center field, so that's a sacrifice. And an RBI for Caleb Nice to score Hermiller. The other runners did not tag up. Ball was right in front of them. Jared Neese steps in. He swings away and fouls it off first base side. Out of play. 7-2 Rams lead here in the top of the fifth inning. Neese struck out looking in the first, singled, and scored in the fourth. He's the DH for Carter Neese. Pitches, tap, shortstop side, Razik up with it, throws over to third base to Terran Ward to get the force out, and that is the second out. So Nice is on at first. Lehman goes down to second, and Koenig is out number two on the fielder's choice. Runners still at first and second, now with two outs. Brendan Barlogi steps in. Pitch to Barlogi from Bosselman is a strike. Barlogi struck out in the first, singled in the fourth. 275 for Brendan. Bosselman about the end of his rope here, I think. Pitch hit right back at Bosselman. He knocks it down. He gets back up. Throws over to first base. Nice play by Hunter Bosselman. That was a rocket. One hopped him. Hit him right in the stomach. Rolled down the third base side of the mound. Alertly, Hunter scooped it up and fired over to first base in time to get Barlogi 1-3 on the putout for out number three. So in the inning for Miller City, they get one run. They do so on three hits. No Ram errors and two left on base for Miller City. We're through four and a half here at Group Field. This is it's No Ram 7 and the Miller City Wildcats 2 on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. The Ann Stevens Body Shop is your number one voted auto collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. We have recently built a brand new state-of-the-art 20,000 square foot body shop along with a 2,500 square foot addition to our paint shop. This includes a brand new eco-friendly paint booth that is top of the line. At Batten Stevens, we use the latest and newest technology the industry has to offer. We are your experts on all makes and models of vehicles and are the only Chrysler, Ford, and GM certified collision repair facility in Northwest Ohio. Give us a call today at 419-497-3111 to schedule your free estimate or stop by and visit us in downtown Jewel, Ohio. Matt and Stevens Body Shop would like to wish all teams good luck this season. Speaking of Jeff Bad, ironically, the Bat and Steven commercial played during the break. Snow Rams baseball team had a raffle. It was a Yeti cooler full of meat and a couple other things. And the winning ticket was drawn last half inning. And the winner is Jeff Bat. So congratulations to Jeff. Couldn't have happened to a nicer fellow. Jeff, always a fantastic contributor to anything and everything involving high school sports. So the winner of the baseball raffle goes to Jeff Bat. So congratulations, Jeff. Well deserved. I, I must throw my two cents in there. Jeff, one of the nicer individuals that you ever want to meet and never says no to anything. So about, yes. Jeff Bat is your winner of the Yeti Cooler with a bunch of me. So cookout tonight at Jeff's house, I guess. <laughs> Doesn't know that yet. But <laughs> 7 2. Rams lead by five as we head to the bottom of inning number five. Hunter Bosselman took a shot in the stomach off the one hopper to end the third inning. Nice play by Hunter to gather himself and throw the runner out at first base. First pitch to Hunter is called a strike. Bosselman been on base twice and scored a run. Singled in the first inning. Reached on the fielder's choice in the third. Strike two quickly to Hunter Bosselman. Pitch outside. One ball and two strikes. 
Owen Toby came on last inning to become the third pitcher to work for the Wildcats. Pitch to Bosselman is fouled back. One ball and two strikes. Sun trying to peek through here at Group Field. Started right on the nose at 11 o'clock. It was 66 degrees at first pitch. Stays high and away. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Bosselman has gone the distance on the mound for the Rams. Pitched a very effective game, allowing just two runs. Pitches outside. Bosselman has worked the count full to three balls and two strikes. Logan McQuillan was warming in the bullpen last inning. We'll see if Logan comes in or if Bosselman stays out there. Fouls it right back again. Count stays at full three and two. Payoff pitch to Bosselman. He hits it right back to Toby off his knee to the second baseman. Yeah. Wayman with a heck of a play for the second time. Coach Peaster going to come out and check on his starting pitcher. That was a one hopper right back to the mound. Toby took it off his knee. It ricocheted over to second baseman C.J. Lehman. He fired over to first base to get Bosselin for the first out. Yeah. Help that picture, oh, man. Everything about everything. <laughs> 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 you lying, dude. <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rub a little dirt on it. Rub a little dirt on it. One, four, three on the put out. You have to go on the out for the first out. I'll bet she's making. Yes, you can. You like plasmin? will be the hitter. He pinch hit for Mason McQuillan, who started at second last inning. Mm -hmm. So the pitcher, Owen Toby, going to take a couple pitches. Toby's going to have a little bruise tonight, probably, or else probably before he leaves the parking lot. That was a wicked, just a laser one hopper. Eli. Off of Toby's knee, even better play out there by the second baseman, C.J. Lehman. Second great play by Lehman here today. First pitch to Plasman is a ball. So back-to-back -back one hoppers back to the pitcher. And about three batters. That pitch is a little bit outside and low. Two balls and no strikes to Eli Plasman. Any shot here? Eli walked and scored in the third. Pitch is high, ball three to Eli. 7-2 Rams here in the bottom of the fifth on this Saturday afternoon. About 90 minutes old, game time. Back here Monday versus Delta. 3-0 pitch. Drake called on the outside corner. Thank you, Don, for joining us here today. And Susan and Ray, Bridget. John, 3-1 count. That one's low, ball four. Plasman draws a one-out walk. Back-to-back -back walks BJ Morlock. by Eli. So B.J. Morlock steps in. B.J. with a single that resulted in two runs scored last inning. That was that play by C.J. Lehman at second base. Pitch is low. Nice stop by the backstop, Brendan Barlotti. Toby on the mound, Barlogi behind the plate. Jake, or Caleb Neese at first. T.J. Lehman at second. Carter Neese at short. Will Otto at third for the Wildcats. Throw down to first. Plasman back safely. Outfield. Brent Koenig in left. Thomas Weiss in center. And Ethan Barlogi is in left. So the Nieces and Barlogis must have had a lot of backyard baseball games growing up. Pitch to B.J. Morlock is inside, ball three. Three balls and no strikes to the Rams' designated hitter. B.J. Morlock. That pitch catches the corner, strike called. Three balls and a strike to B.J. One out, runner at first base, Eli Plasman. 
That pitch is low, ball four, back-to-back -back walks, put runners at first and second. Weisman goes down to second base, and B.J. trots down to first. So Morlock's been on base all three times. It's going to bring up Grady Gusweiler. Goes down and has a conversation with head coach Brett Renolette, coaching at third. Coach Renolette last week pitched, uh, pitched, picked up career win 400 here at Tenora. Versus out of hill. Timeout. Coach Peaster is going to head out to have a conversation with Owen Toby. Gus Weiler is 0 for 2 here on this Saturday, now early afternoon. Coach Renolette is going to go out and talk to his base runners, Plasman and Morlock. 7 2 Tenor leads here in the bottom of the fifth. Two runs in the first, four in the third. One in the fourth for their seven. Miller City back-to-back -back single runs in the fourth and fifth for their two. Coach Peaster out there having a conversation with the Ram infield. That's going to be it for... Oh, and Toby will take a brief timeout. I assume that line drive off his kneecap has a lot to do with it. So, Peaster is going to exit his starter, starter, his relief pitcher, Toby, and we'll take a timeout and be back right after this with a new pitcher. High standards, hard work, sincerity. For the past 37 years, those have been the day to day ideals behind Bat and Stevens, regarded as one of the finest auto body repair shops in the six county area. Our technicians understand how you feel about your vehicle, so they're trained to know your automobile inside and out. Bat and Stevens will provide you with fine workmanship at a fair price. We will work closely with you to ensure your complete satisfaction. We believe full service is one of the keys to complete collision repair. Once your vehicle enters our shop, you can be sure it is handled with the utmost attention to detail at every phase of the repair process. Our skilled professionals are committed to this high standard of quality on every job, from small dings to major collision damage. Whether it is just fitting decorative trim pieces or restoring your vehicle's entire structure, we work on all makes and models, foreign and domestic, including recreational vehicles. Our state-of-the-art equipment helps us perform every kind of job with a lifetime guarantee. Free estimates can be obtained anytime and loaner cars are available by appointment. Bat and Stevens Body Shop has also been selected as the 2020 Crescent News Reader's Choice Awards Favorite Body Shop in the Six County Area. Bat and Stevens Body Shop, located in downtown Jewel, Ohio. 419-497-3111. That's 419-497-3111. And as we said, Jeff Bat is the winner of the Cooler. Raffled by the Snore baseball team, a Yeti Cooler full of meat. What a better way to celebrate a Saturday than winning a cooler full of meat. So congratulations to Jeff Bad. Well deserved. New pitcher is Jared Neese. Becomes the fourth pitcher here. And I believe the fifth niece to appear in the game. First pitch to Gus Weiler. Low. Gets through the catcher. Barloggy. Runners move up. Plasman down to second. Morlock got a late jump. Throw down to second base. Gets away. Allows Plasman to score. So Plasman plates the run number eight on a kind of weird play there. All right, Grady. So Eli scores from third. Down to second base went B.J. Morlock. Morlock got a late jump and a good throw would have got him, which actually resulted in a bad throw and allowed Plasman to score. Pitch to Grady was a ball. Second pitch is a strike. One ball and one strike to Rams center fielder Grady Gusweiler. Grady 0 for 2. Came in batting 261. Pitch at low and outside. Nice backhanded stop by Barlotti. Two balls and one strike to Gus Weiler. Warlock leads from second. <coughs> Pitch swung on. Fouled off first base side out of play. Two balls and two strikes to Grady Gus Weiler. <laughs> In drive it. Jared Neese. <laughs> his 2 2 pitch. Inside. Hit Grady. So Grady trots down to first base. Going to put runners at first and second. 
hit by pitch by Grady. So Riley Peters is going to come in and pinch hit for Aiden Mosier. Peters on the season for Riley is 188. Oh, Riley. So Peters will hit for Mosier. Rams runners at first and second. Gus Weiler at first. Morlock at second. Jared Neese climbs on top of the mound. First pitch coming to Peters. Strike call. No balls and one strike. Peters follows it back. Strike two. Coach Peaster sneaks and picks up the foul ball and heads back to the first base dugout. No balls and two strikes. Here comes the pitch to Peters. Inside. Swings out of the way. Jeronese, the fourth pitcher for the Wildcats. One, two pitch. Two Peters outside corner. Strike three called. So Peters becomes the out here. Number two in the fifth inning. A ramp. Caden Radzik with runners at first and second. 8 2 Rams lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Pitch to Caden. Catches the outside corner. Strike called. Jared Neese, just one inning of work here this season. Three hits, four runs, none earned. And he struck out one. All two now. Uh -huh. Strike out to Peters. Nice backhand stop by Barlog. He fires down to first base. They got Grady picked off. Throw down to the shortstop. Carter Neese puts the tag on Gus Weiler for out number three. Rams caught napping there just a bit. In the inning, the Rams get... One run, and they do so without the benefit of a hit. Two walks and a hit batsman in the inning. No errors, and after the pickoff, one left on base. The Rams have left a single runner on base every inning so far today. On your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard as we head to the top of the sixth, Sonora 8 and Miller City 2 will be back right after this time out here on Sonora Rams Live. Signs Excavating of Defiance offers a variety of excavating and trucking services. Signs Excavating can assist with general excavating services, demolition, and emergency repair work. From driveways to ditch cleaning to site prep, Signs Excavating is here to assist. Signs Trucking Service can also assist in any of your equipment hauling needs. They're located at 2147 State Route 66. Signs Excavating, family owned and operated since 1999. For any excavating needs, give Josh a call at 419-769-2290. And for your trucking needs, bring up Brad. 419 Be sure to visit them online at signsexcavating.com or Signs Excavating on Facebook. Signs Excavating wishes all the best to the Tenora Rams athletes. Back at Tenora High School, new pitcher Mason McQuillan will step in. Mason had a fantastic relief appearance at Wasian on Tuesday. Mason Three and two-thirds innings pitched. It's allowed one run, one earned run, one hit, three walks, and one strikeout. ERA of 2.06. So Mason comes in in relief. Second time this week. Did a great job Tuesday. Number three, Thomas Weiss. So we'll see if Mason can duplicate his out, outing on Tuesday. Thomas Weiss is going to step in. First batter to face McQuillan. Weiss, 306 on the on the season. Pitch is low. Heads off of Dalton Wolfram can't find it. Hit his shin guard. 8-2 Rams lead here in the Top of the sixth inning. McQuillan's pitch inside. Two balls and a strike. Right here. 
Mason gets a sign from Wolfram, winds it up. This 2-0 pitch, swung on and miss. Strike called. Two balls and one strike to Thomas Neese. Struck out in the second and singled in the fourth. Swung on and missed. Two balls and two strikes to Thomas Weiss. Ethan Barlaghi is on deck for Miller City. 2-2 pitch coming from McQuillan. He winds it up. Comes the pitch to Weiss outside. Count goes full at three balls and two strikes. Eight runs for Tenora, two for Miller City. Top of the sixth we are. Rams back here Monday versus Delta. 3-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Oh, Weiss goes down swinging for the first out here in the sixth inning. For McQuillan, that's his first strikeout. Going to bring up Ethan Barlogge. Barlogge walked in the second, had a sacrifice in the fourth with an RBI. So he officially does not have him to bat. Bats from the left side. McQuillan winds, fires, strike called. McQuillan lost his cap. He picks it up. Mason just a sophomore. Played a fantastic second base this week, and this is his second relief outing. 0-1 pitch. Strike called on the inside corner. Barlogge quickly behind. No balls and two strikes. Ethan Barlogge, that is. Kind of like Wayne Trace, you got to announce first names. As well as last names. 0-2 pitch. Swung on and missed. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for McQuillan. First Weiss, now Ethan Barlogge. Barlogge. Ethan becomes out number two. Ethan Ellerbrook. Yeah. Always have a pinch. Up to the plate, number 18, Aiden Laus. You have a pinch hitter, Aiden Laus. So Laus is the pinch hitter. First a bat for Laus here today. <laughs> First pitch is a ball by McQuillan. McQuillan winds it up, his 1-0 pitch to Laus. Outside, two balls and no strikes for <laughs> Laos will get a stats here in a second. 2-0 pitch, strike on the inside corner. So for Laos, does not have a hit in six plate appearances. McQuillan winds it up. 2-1. Strike called. McQuillan, nice looking sophomore so far. Two varsity appearances. He said came in in relief. He was actually the player of the game on Tuesday at Wauseon. 2-2 pitch. Swung on and miss. McQuillan fans the side. Three up, three down. Weiss, Ethan Barlogi, and Ethan Ellerbrook all down swinging on the right arm of sophomore Logan, or Logan Mason McQuillan. I knew he was going to do it. Mason McQuillan. No runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We're going to head to the bottom of inning number six here at Sonora High School. It is Tenora 8, and the Miller City Wildcats 2 on your drop zone pizzeria scoreboard. We'll be back with the bottom of the sixth right after this. Are you tired of losing money on your 401k or other retirement accounts? Well, you're not alone. Do what many area residents have done and call Postal Insurance and Investments. With safe money strategies offered to you by PI&I, you can still have the benefits of market earnings without the risk of taking market loss. Sound too good to be true? Give us a call and with experienced agents at PI&I will work with you to understand how you can do just that. If you're more interested in the CD style accounts but are fed up with low CD rates, PI&I agents can set you up with an account with rates currently as high as 5.5% fixed with certain restrictions apply. Call us today at 419-782-2500 to help you set up a plan that meets your investment goals. So that's 782-2500, Postuma Insurance and Investments, protecting everything you've worked for. Back at Tenora High School, 8-2 as we head to the bottom of inning number six. On the mound for Miller City is Brendan Barlogge. Barlogge came in last inning in relief of Owen Toby. Toby took a line shot off his kneecap, stayed in for a couple batters. 
And then Coach Peaster came out and got him. So Barlogi in his second inning of work here will face the Rams numbers two, three, and four hitters. Radzik, Dalton Wolfram, and Taryn Ward as your scheduled hitters. Just one inning of pitch coming into today for Brendan Barlogi. So, for Tenora, shortstop Caden Radzik steps in. Number 11, Caden Radzik. Radzik, 366 coming in. 22 runs batted in. And now 19 stolen bases on the season. Has four steals today. Three runs scored. A walk and hit by a pitch. And reached on an air. So, a full scorebook for the Ram shortstop, Caden Radzik. First pitch to Radzik is a ball. Second pitch off the right arm of Brendan Barlaghi is a strike. Count to Radzik is one ball and one strike. And as always, we say hello to Pittsburgh Sioux. 1-1 one, one pitch. Breaking ball just a bit high. Two balls and one strike to the Ram shortstop. Brendan Barlaghi's 2-1 pitch. Swung on drill deep foul left field side. Eight two Rams up by six as they bat here in the bottom of the sixth. Radzik fouls it off first base side. Two balls and two strikes. No runners on base. Nobody out here. Brendan Barlaghi's 2-2 pitch to Radzik. Pokes it in the center field for a single. Just kind of threw the bat on the ball. Radzik did. And that results in a leadoff single. Going to bring up Dalton Wolfram. Dalton's got a scorebook full of numbers as well. Doubled. Scored and has an RBI in the first. Reached on the air and scored in the third. Singled. Stole the base in the fourth. First pitch to Dalton. Oh, 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 Pops it in the air behind the plate. The catcher, he, Brendan, or I guess we have a new catcher now because Brendan's on the mound. That is Jared Neese slipped off the mask. He couldn't find the ball. It wasn't like a towering pop-up in foul territory behind the plate by any means. Just a soft pop-up. By the time Jared Neese flipped the mask off, the ball landed right at his feet. Throw back to first base. Radzik dives in safely. Wolfram came in batting 409 on the season. Rams as a team, 319. Pitch to the plate. Strike called on the outside corner. Not you. Not you. I don't believe the Rams have an error, so their team ERA is actually going to go up. And they've allowed just two runs so far. Came in with a team ERA of 1.81. Pitch to Wolfram is way outside. One ball and two strikes to the Rams catcher, Dalton Wolfram. See it and drive it now. Taryn Ward awaits on deck. One, two pitch to Wolfram. Radzik leads away. Pitches in the dirt. Nice stop by the new catcher, Jared Neese. All right, come on, D. We so we got a lot of Nieses and a lot of Barlogies here. 2-2 pitch to Dalton. Swings and misses. Dalton goes down on strikes. Now batting number four. Be the Taren first Ward. out here in yep. the sixth inning. That'll bring up the Rams third baseman, Taryn Ward. Taryn with a single and a stolen base in the first. Had a double in the third and walked in the fourth. Breaking ball stays on the inside corner. Strike one to Taryn. Oh, one pitch just misses one ball and one strike. Brendan Barlaghi now on the mound and Jared Neese behind the plate. Basically, they switched last inning after Toby exited with the injury. 
Ward swings and fouls at first base side. That goes out of play. One ball and two strikes to Taryn Ward. 8-2, Rams lead here in the bottom of the six. Have a runner at first. And Caden Radzik. They have one out. Taryn Ward at the plate with the one ball, two strike count. Brendan Barlogi. One in relief. Fourth pitcher for the Wildcats. Barlogi comes set. One, two pitch. Swung on. Drilled to medium deep left field over in at the line. Brent Koenig puts it away just inside the foul line over there for out number two. Oh. A pinch hitter. Corbin Castile is going to bat for Luke Harris. Corbin Castile. So Castile pinch is, uh, is pinch hitting for Harris. Here, fella. Two outs, runner at first still with Tenora batting is Caden Radzik. First pitch to Corbin is a strike. Limited appearances at the plate for Corbin. He is officially has four plate appearances and does not have a hit. Way outside off the glove of Jared Neese down to second base goes Caden Radzik. He pulls up there. Back-to-back -back shutouts for Castillo on the mound last yeah. week. A week ago, shut out the state-ranked Patrick Henry Patriots here. Follow that up with a one-hit shutout last night versus Brian. 1-1 one, one count coming to Castillo. That's low. Ball two. He's can't find the ball. Radzik takes off for third. And there he goes. So Radzik. Nice try. Back-to-back -back wild pitches. Winds up at third base. Last night here, Castillo retired the last night. Golden Bears he faced allowed a bunt single with two outs in the first and that was the last Golden Bear to reach base Castillo fouls it off the catcher Jared Nisa's mask count goes two balls and two strikes Hunter Bosselman awaits on deck stay on here see it and drive it Hunter gives the ball back to Mr. Tim the home plate umpire Brendan Barlogi gets the sign. Comes set. 2-2 two, two pitch. The strike. Three called. Castillo goes down looking. So Corbin, the final out here in the sixth inning. And the inning for the Rams. No runs. They get a single by Radzik. No errors, and they leave one on the base. Through six innings of play, the Rams have left a single runner on base every single inning. They lead... 8-2 as we head to the top of the seventh inning here on your Drop Zone Pizzeria scoreboard. Optimal Performance Fitness is not just your typical gym. Here at OPF, you don't pay for a membership just to hop on a treadmill. We are a fitness coaching center that strives to provide an experience like no other. We provide accountability and results. You either work one-on-one -on -one with a certified personal trainer or in a group setting with like-minded people. Here at OPF, we want to change your mindset of going to the gym into something that you enjoy and look forward to doing. Rather than going to the gym merely to work out, we train at OPF. We are your cheering section, your motivators, and so to be family. Optimal Performance Fitness strives to help you achieve the best version of yourself. Contact us today to take that first step. It could be life-changing. Stop with all the excuses. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Call Jake at 419-438-7265 and get started today at Optimal Performance Fitness. Top of the seventh inning we go. Mason McQuillan, tongue tied. Mason McQuillan on for his second inning of relief off of Hunter Bosselman. Bosselman in line to get the win here on this Tuesday. And for Hunter, that will be his first win. Connor Hermiller steps in for a second at bat. Hermiller pinch hit for Will Otto in the fifth inning, singled and scored. McQuillan, first pitch. Little tapper. Wolfram gathers, fires. Nice play by Dalton Wolfram. Little tapper between the mound and home plate. Wolfram gave way, or actually McQuillan gave way to Wolfram. Dalton had his momentum headed towards first base. Fired in time to get Permiller. Two, three for the first out. 
McQuillan struck out three straight batters last inning. First pitch is strike on the outside corner. Mason needs a smaller hat. <laughs> or something. <laughs> like every pitch, his cap goes flying. Oh, one pitch. Strike. Two call. You need to steal one of the sister's bobby pins. So sneak into Logan's room and get a bobby pin and fix your cap. <laughs> Mason, <laughs> no balls and two strikes to Brent Koenig. McQuillan rocks, fires, swung on and miss. Wolfram put the tag on the runner. I'm not sure if it was necessary, but that's a four strikeout for Mason McQuillan. That's out number two. And you can see why number six, CJ McQuillan has a bright future, along with the three or the two other sophomores, Shoblin, who's currently injured, and Hunter Bosselman, who pitched the first five innings here today. C.J. Lehman steps in. First pitch to C.J. is a bit outside, or a bit inside. One ball and no strikes. So McQuillan, four strikeouts in the five batters he's faced. Hmm. McQuillan's 1-0 to C.J. Lehman. That's low. Two balls and a strike. Caleb Neese is on deck for the Wildcats. They trail 8-2 to two here in the top of the seventh. McQuillan winds it up. 2-0 pitch. Ball three. Three balls and no strikes as Mason yep, bends down here. to get his cap again. Need some tape. McQuillan's 3-0 to C.J. Lehman. That's low. Ball four. So Lehman goes down to first base. Yeah, like two or three fantastic play, defensive plays three, by C.J. Lehman. Caleb Neese steps in. Neese walked in the first, flew out in the fourth, and sacrificed with an RBI in the fifth. Had a sacrifice fly to Aiden, Aiden Mosier in left. Yeah. Riley Peters is now in left field for Tenora. And Connor Wolfram is in right. McQuillan comes set. First pitch is a ball. Five straight balls by McQuillan after striking out three of the first four batters. Lehman leads away from first. No need to worry about him in an 8-2 to two game. McQuillan's 1-0. Ball inside. All of a sudden, McQuillan can't find the strike zone. I think I jinxed myself. I said too many nice things about him. Mason gets the sign. 2-0 pitch to Caleb Neese. Swung on and drilled to left field. Peters comes in. Now takes a couple steps back and puts it away for out number three. F7 on the put out in the inning for the Wildcats of North City. No runs for the Wildcats. No hits, no ram errors, and one left on base. See you, coach. Final from Tenora. Tenora 8, Miller City 2 with the win. Rams pick up win 18. They go to 18 and 4. And Miller City falls to 14 and 12. Stay tuned. Coming up, we'll have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments post game show as soon as I can find it because I can't see my soundboard. The sun is kind of shining right on it. What little sun we have here. But coming up, we'll have the Bidlack Insurance and Investments post game show right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. 
Back at Tenor High School, Rams wrap up a 8-2 victory over Miller City. Winning pitcher will be Hunter Bosso and picks up his first win. And for Miller City, the losing pitcher will go to starter Ethan, Ethan Ellerbrook. It's just one inning of work here. There's four pitchers that worked for Coach Peaster and the Wildcats. But congratulations. First varsity win for Hunter Wasselman here in 2023. For the visiting Miller City Wildcats, they had two runs and collected seven hits. They left seven on base. And for Tenora, they had eight runs on eight hits. No errors for Tenor. Actually, Miller said he did commit two errors. And the Rams left a runner on base every inning, so they left six on base. Hey, how's it going? Okay. Lots of action for Caden Redzik. Redzik on base all four times, scored three runs, stole four bases. And Dahl Wolfram scored two runs. He was on base three times as well. Eli Plasman on base twice, scored two runs as well. So stay tuned, coming up. Have a selection for our Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. And we'll try to figure out who we're going to give that to right after this. Higby Embroidery of Defiance offers custom screen printing and custom embroidery to local high schools and individuals from all areas. Connie Higby and her staff have been serving and supporting Tenora High School as well as the Tri-County area since 1999. From throws to t-shirts to school jackets and much more, Higby Embroidery is here to serve your custom needs. Higby Embroidery is located at 1940 East 2nd Street in Defiance. Contact them at 419-428-3000 or visit them online at Higby.com or Higby Embroidery on Facebook. Higby Embroider is a proud sponsor of the Tenora Rams Live Player of the Game Award. Check out Tenora Rams Live. Live events broadcast on YouTube and post-game results, articles, schedules, and more can all be found on TenoraRams.com. Back to the action on Tenora Rams Sports Live. Welcome back to the Higby Embroidery Player of the Game Award. This is a tough decision. I have quite a few things I was bouncing around. No, I don't really get a concrete answer. Caden Razzik had a great game. Hunter Bosselman picked up his first win here in 2023. Two runs and about seven hits for Hunter. Mason McQuillan, very effective in his relief role as well. Struck out four batters. But we're going to give our player of the game to Hunter Bosselman. So congratulations, Hunter. You are the Higby Embroidery player of the game versus Miller City. Pick the first win. So congratulations to Hunter. Again, final here. Rams pick up an 8-2 victory over the visiting Wildcats from Miller City. They fall to 14-2. And the Rams improved to 18 and 4. Thank you for joining us. And hope you have a great weekend. Thanks to our fantastic sponsorships that we have here BSN Sports, Weber Bookkeeping, Maumee Valley Title Agency, Clubhouse Pizza, and they, Fairchild Family Chiropractic Center, Optimal Performance and Fitness, Drop Zone Pizzeria, Higby Embroidery, Signs Excavating, Firestone Tavern, Oklahoma Tavern, Northwest Ohio Sports, Bat and Stevens Body Shop. Tenora Rams Athletic Boosters, Cut and Polished Hair and Nail Salon, Wooden Indian Pawn Shop, Bidlack Insurance and Financial Services, Wiener Hill Weber, and Stanley Attorneys at Law, Postal Insurance and Investments, and finally, Mayfield Engineering Corporation. Start your Met career today. Go to metcareers.com. $1,000 sign-on bonus for those that are eligible after 90 days. Again, Rams on fire as they head into the first week of the state tournament. 18-4 and four is the Rams record. Who would have thought? Have a fantastic weekend, everybody. We'll see you Monday back here versus Delta. Kaylee will have the girls game versus Ryan.
Thanks for listening to this exclusive presentation of Tenora Rams Sports. Be sure to tune in next time when we bring you more Rams action and follow us online at TenoraRamsSportsAudio.com or on Twitter at Tenora Rams Audio. 